In this video, we are going to look at how to control a circuit with a component known as a transistor. Let's begin by first looking at a simple circuit consisting of a battery, a lamp, and a switch. When the switch is closed, the electricity will flow from the battery into the lamp through the switch and back into the battery, and so the cycle will continue. Now before continuing, I'm going to make a few changes here. When we deal with circuits connected to control boards like the Raspberry Pi, Instead of using a battery, we use pins at different voltage levels. In the case of this circuit, we've connected one side of the bulb to 5 volts and the other side of the bulb to ground. On the diagram, we must also include ground on the opposite side of the voltage supply. Now, this does not mean that I have connected the 5 volt pin to ground. Instead, this means that the voltage with respect to ground is 5 volts. Another way to think about this is electricity comes from ground, gains 5 volts, then goes through the lamp where it loses 5 volts and then returns back to ground where it can complete that cycle once again. Let's now look back at how we control the circuit. Whenever we want to turn on the bulb, we simply close the switch. But that is something that must physically be done by a person. We can't easily ask a computer to flip a switch as computers don't have hands. What computers can do is control the voltage level of a pin. So we would like some sort of switch that is turned on and off by changing a voltage level, and a transistor will do exactly that. Here, I have replaced the switch with a transistor. Notice that a transistor has three pins. The pins are called base, collector, and emitter. You can think of the base as the control of the transistor. That is, the transistor can be switched on or off by changing the voltage level on the base. When the transistor is on, current will flow from the collector to the emitter. When the transistor is off, almost no current will flow through it. Now I should point out that this is known as an NPN transistor, not to be confused with a PNP transistor. Notice that the symbols are only slightly different, and the collector and emitter have switched places. For now, we will only focus on NPN transistors. I've already mentioned that a transistor can be controlled by changing the voltage level on the base, so let's connect a GPIO pin to it. I've included a resistor as only a very small current is needed to turn on the transistor. In fact, without the resistor, I risk burning out the transistor and possibly damaging the Raspberry Pi due to an excessively high current. Now in this case, I've decided to use a 1 kilo ohm resistor, but that's just for this circuit. In the next video on transistors, I will show you how to calculate the value of the base resistor. Now we have our completed circuit. If we want to turn our pin on, we must set our GPIO pin to high, a small current will flow from it into the transistor, and a much larger current will flow from the 5 volt pin through the lamp and then through the transistor to ground. If the GPIO pin is set to low, no current will flow into the base and the transistor will remain off, with no current passing from the collector to the emitter. One final thought, you may be wondering why we didn't connect the lamp to simply a 3.3 volt GPIO pin and ground. In this way, we could directly control the bulb by setting the GPIO pin either to high or low. Well, there are a few reasons why this won't always work. First of all, our GPIO pin can only be set to either 0 volts or 3.3 volts, so we can't get any other voltage values from it. Secondly, for our GPIO pins, only a small current can be drawn from them. This bulb may want something like 50 milliamps, which is well over the safety limit of the GPIO pins. The idea of using the transistor is we can control a much larger current from a small one. And because of this, transistors are often called amplifiers.